This is Talking Fire with Hilton Turner and Cloud Ford. Once today, again. Today we're discussing design and categories of systems, when and where they're required, and any specific <clears throat> notes that need to be made with regards to, to the design. So mm. obviously, generally, we've got uh, the P system, which is protecting property, mm -hmm. assets, and that. Then we've got the L systems, which are protecting life or the occupants within the building. Yes. Okay. But just to start off, the first system is obviously an M system. So an that, M that's system, your sort of baseline. The baseline, cheap, which is... Cheap and cheerful. The cheap, yeah. Mm. So that's a core point. It's a manual core point and sounder system. Mm -hmm. The manual core points are once again spaced as per 10139. So they need to be 30 meters apart with a maximum walking distance of 45. Yep as well as at all fresh air exits. Yes. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, Clive. Now I'm going to pass on to you P1 and P2. When would you recommend using them? Right. Obviously, a lot of the a lot of this is dictated in 10400 as to as to what type of system needs to be done for what type of building and what the you know, what the building's being used for. Yeah. How do you look at a P system? Okay. A P1 system and what is the difference between a P1 system? And the P2 system. Okay. And <clears throat> any suggestions you would have to our to our audience when <clears throat> when installing or right. designing in accordance to those systems. All right. So um, as Hilton says, a P system is protecting property. So you would have it in storage, in uh, warehousing, that kind of thing. Because the P system, the difference between a P and an L, the basic difference is. Uh, you don't need sounders, you don't need alarms in a P system because in theory there's nobody there that you need to warn. It's going to be a warehouse with stuff in it. P1 system is very similar to L1 system, is that you've got to have detection in the whole building. Um, okay. You've got to have remote alarming, um, monitoring, so that if there's an alarm, you can get somebody to react to it. A P2 system is in specified high-risk areas. So... For instance, um, if you have a warehouse and in the corner you've got a little high fla highly flammable store okay. where you're storing flammable liquids and you only want to protect that. A competent person, a fire risk analysis has to be carried out and somebody clever is going to say, sign off and say, the warehouse is fine, we only want to put detection into that flammable store area. So that's the two differences. So P2 system is specified areas within a room or within a building. Um, and a, L1, a, a P1 system is going to be the complete building. That's that's the basics. Okay, so, <clears throat> there, so there we're just protecting the property, the Correct. assets, yeah. and that kind of stuff. Moving on to life safety. And I think life safety well, is, is probably a lot of the stuff we discussed Most with, about with stuff, regards yeah. to the life safety. Um, as we, we've just been through, yeah. been through hospitals, there's obviously hotels, there's a lot, a lot of aspects. L1 to L5. Okay. Okay. So should we start at an L5 and yep. work back? Start at the bottom and, and work our way back. through. Yeah. So L5. L5. Okay. Keep in mind that our system by default has manual core points and sounders. So okay. that integrates the, the requirements of an M system. Plus. Is there plus Correct. the automatic yeah. detection side. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. So L5 is specified areas in a building. So it's very much going to be on your risk analysis, your fire risk consultant, your designer, a competent person. Again, going back to somebody is going to sign off your design certificate and say, I am taking responsibility that I only want detection in the MD's office because he's really important and we don't care about anybody else. Okay. So it's a specified high risk area inside a building. Okay. Okay. Um, and I'm going to refer to notes here because it, it does get a bit uh, sort of uh, special. Right. So, L5 coverage and design is to meet specific fire safety objective. This may be defined in a fire engineering solution or from a fire risk assessment. So, as I say, you're going to have a, a source that well, let's take the modern days now. Um, you've got a room that you put aside for your solar battery backup and you've got batteries in there. You want detection in there. Okay, okay. 100%. L4 moves one step above that. So that's, a, that's almost a standalone. L4 
specifies that you need detection in uh, escape routes and circulation areas. So if you've got a common area, you've got passages inside a building, that's where your alpha was going to be, including your manual core points at escape routes and so on. Manual core points, uh, as Hilton said, 45 meter travel distance to get to one and any door that is open to place of ultimate safety is the right terminology. Okay. So even though um, this is a door going out here, you are going to be looking, am I going to ultimate safety? It doesn't help having a door going outside and then you're going onto a balcony and you're stuck there. Okay. Okay. So L4 is circulation areas and corridors. Okay. Okay. Itchy eye. Right. L3. L3. Coverage of escape routes and rooms opening onto escape routes. So you got your escape route, so you got your L4. Now you're going to go one step ahead and you're going to put a L3 system in. Any room leading onto your escape route is where your detection is going to be as well. So it's one step up from just normal corridors and normal circulation areas. So you got a office block, you got your fire, you got your fire escapes, and you got the door coming out of this office onto that fire escape. That's where you need to have your detection as well. So, so I'm assuming this is like obviously now if for example somebody has a fire in a bin within an office um it's allowing everybody to evacuate prior Correct. to it spreading as opposed to just detecting Correct. because once it gets detected in the escape route yeah you have the source of issue or the source of fire is inside yeah. the escape route so evacuation could be an issue potentially potentially yeah so we just you you want a warning to say listen there's something happening let's let's meander out of the building before it becomes an issue okay yeah um L2 is going to be the same as L4, uh, L3, sorry, as well as areas of high risk. So you've got your escape routes and you've got your, your, your rooms leading onto the escape routes and anywhere else where there could be a high risk. So you're taking the L5 and adding it into that. Okay. Yeah. So uh, you could have an office or a canteen, for instance, and you've got a kitchen. So your kitchen is a source of a, a high source, high risk area. So you're going to put detection in your kitchen as well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's and then L1 is obviously the cream of the crop. Everywhere. Yeah. Okay. So so, so, so traditionally, oh, talking many moons back, we used yeah. to refer to an H1 standard, which was like the hotel standard, and that was Correct, kind of referred yeah. to. That's now been integrated into the L1. So yeah. when we're doing a hotel, when we're doing accommodation, when we're doing that, we're focusing on an L1 system. Yes, yeah. Which covers, um, just to jump the gun, any area above a square meter. Yeah. Um, all escape routes. The standard does specify, all right, so now we're going to go back to um, 104.00, part C. That gives you your building classification. So as you said, the, the H1. Yes. That says it's a hotel. That then refers to 101.39. And in 10139, you have then the specified area. So a hotel, you must have an L1 system and a voice evacuation system. Um, a shopping center needs to have detection in the shopping center. You can't do a P2 system in a shopping center because P2 says specified areas. Who's going to specify in the shopping center, which is your high risk areas? You've got a big open area, so that's seen as your escape routes or your common areas, that needs detection. And your shops, your, your line shops leading onto that, that needs detection. So a P system is not correct in a shopping center because you're protecting life. Okay. By default, uh, our system will give you alarm so that you got the P side of it covered in any case. But ultimately, you want to save lives there. You, you imagine um, East Rand Mall. There's huge amount of shops there. There's huge amount of people in there. You want to get them out there safely. Imagine East Rand Mall on Christmas Eve. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, it's yeah. <clears throat> there's, there's obviously, there's different uh, solutions. Well, there's not. It's, it's pretty much stipulated the standard when yeah. detectors are required, when not, spacing of detectors. Correct, um, yeah. I know there are people, there's a um, variety of change of shops. So, just remember when changing between like a heat detector and a smoke detector, there are coverage differences. Correct. And those kind of stuff, everything yeah. needs to be taken into account. And that, that 
commonly comes back to like a shopping center, for mm. example, you know. Today it's a shoe shop, tomorrow they're mm. selling fish and chips. It's a little restaurant, yeah. You know, so, you know, obviously smoke might be an issue. You've got your seven and a half meters, you've got your 100 square meters. When we drop down to heat, we only got 50 squares, 5.3. Yeah. So these are all the things that are, that are important to take note of. Um, the standards are always up for interpretation. Yes. However, I do feel that when it comes to the categories and stuff, uh, specifically the L1s, L2s, it's it's quite quite black and white in terms of where, I, I where you require so, yeah. detectors. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, we also recommend that uh, when reaching out, when doing fire risk assessments, it, you need to have a competent person because at yeah. the end of the day, somebody has to sign and somebody has to take liability on that system. Correct. So if, you know, I don't believe a guessing game is good enough. No. You know? And it's also, once again, falling under the end user responsibility. Today, if it's a bathroom in a yeah. warehouse, that is not a risk, but they decide that they're building new bathrooms because that old bathroom is going to become a flammable store warehouse or flammable store store. They need to make everybody aware because now it's become high risk yeah. and all that kind of so stuff. So that goes back to your user responsibilities. Reach out to your, your, your contractor that's been appointed to look after your system and say to him, listen, guys, we're changing this area of the warehouse. We're changing this building, whatever it is. We're changing the occupancy rating of that building. Yeah. Yeah. So just, mm. just to finish off, um, the standards make these, it's quite clear yep. in terms of categories. There's various, um, various suppliers that have downloadable apps that give you the stuff mm. more based on BS5839. Yeah. Very few differences, if any, Much between the ourselves. Sameness, and yeah. So if you have any questions, mm. use the standard, use the apps, ask the questions. Make sure that you're giving the client the correct coverage for, yeah. for what their, um, their requirements are. And remember, your, your, your standard is the basic requirements. It's not the ultimate. The, that is a suggestion, and it's the base level of where you need to start. You can always add to it, but you can't go less than that. And the other discussion that's always had is, yeah, but we need an NFPA. We have had discussions with... Uh, the South African Department of Employment and all of those guys. In South Africa, the SAN standard is law. You can use a different standard if it is more than what the existing SAN standard is. So if, um, for instance, and this is not the way it is, but let's say that the SAN standard says you need a detector in every room that is 10 square meters and the NFPA standard says you need it every five square meters. It is a better standard. You can use that, but you cannot go less than what the SANS requirement is. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. I hope that clarifies some of the stuff. But once again, 10400, 10400 Part T. Very important. 10139, even BS5039, this information is readily available. If you need all information, please reach out at any stage and we'll happily share any forum or any platform that you can, you can get this information. Yeah, and um, as we've said many times, we don't know everything, but we will, if you ask us questions, we will know, or we will try and find the right answer for you.